In the last couple of episodes, we've gotten to see the building of a couple of really nice truck components, but we haven't actually seen the chassis itself, and that's what we're doing today. I've got all the parts laid out here. We've got the nice metal chassis rails, all of the cross members, the shock towers. These are the biggest differences from the other kit uh, that will be noticeably seen uh, from the chassis. We've got these shock towers that are just a shock tower. They're not actually a fender. So let's just get right to it and start building. So I've got the first step done where we put the servo mount and the first shock tower in as well as the front cross member. That all went together really well. Okay, so I know I didn't talk a lot during that whole process, but there's really not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, this is a pretty pretty easy build, um, pretty straightforward, just a bunch of screws and a, a lot of plastic going onto the chassis rails. Uh, so I've done the whole right side. I still need to do the left side, and the left side is gonna go pretty much exactly the same as the right side did. Got to put the, uh, still have to put the other shock mounts on, but really that's about it right there. So there it is. The chassis is all done. It looks great. Everything went together as it should. The next portion of the manual is to install the electronics, uh, the transmission, the motor, all that stuff. Uh, here you can see that it says that motor sold separately. It does that for all of the other electronics throughout here, the servo the receiver. Uh, luckily, we've got everything here that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and get some of this stuff in so that way we get one step closer to a brand new T-Rex 4. So just by looking through the bag, I've made a couple of observations of what is actually in here. And this is the electronics bag, although there's no actual electronics in it. This is just stuff to set up all of your electronics. So your receiver box, your motor mounts, your battery tray, stuff like that. Uh, one of the coolest things that I noticed is it actually comes with a metal servo horn. The chassis kit actually did not come with a metal servo horn. It, it had a uh, plastic servo horn, um, but it did come with one. But this is a pretty cool addition that I'm actually pretty excited to see came in here that we have a metal servo horn. We also have a pinion gear that's in here, some zip ties, all of our receiver box stuff, so some foam uh, pads, uh, silicone grease, the rubber gasket that goes around the edge of the receiver box. So a ton of cool stuff. We're gonna go ahead and put some of this stuff uh, in order and then we're going to start working on dropping the transmission into the chassis because that's the first step. And then we start installing the motor. So three screws is all it takes to mount the transmission to the chassis of the truck. We've got two on either side on the top and then one that goes through the bottom of the skid plate right here. So now I'm going to bring in my motor. This is the same motor that uh, Traxxas includes in any stock TRX4. I really like the motor. I've never had an issue with it on my other truck, so I went with this one. One thing I want to show you guys in the instructions over here is that Traxxas actually shows you how far the pinion gear should be on the motor shaft. That's a pretty cool detail that they included. I'm really impressed by that. So 
So lesson learned, don't put the pinion gear on before you put the motor mount because the pinion gear won't actually fit through the hole on the motor mount. So I've got to remove the pinion gear now so that way I can put the motor mount on first and then we do get the pinion gear on afterwards. So I want to point out that here along the motor mount you'll see uh, letters A through H. These are all the different motor mounting positions that you can have on the truck. Uh, the default is set at the letter C. So that's what I'm going to do for this truck because uh, I don't need it to be anything different than that. I'm using their spur gear and their pinion gear. So C is uh, right here. It's about the third from the bottom. And then we're just going to go directly across from that one in the opposite corner. Okay, so the motor's all set up now, so we're going to bring in the chassis. And then we're going to twist it around and we're going to put it right down into the transmission. Okay, so I've got the receiver box, the bottom half of it at least, mounted up to the chassis. And I'm going to bring in my receiver now. This is the Radio Link R6FG. It is a six channel. A receiver that's going to go to my six channel transmitter. Uh, I don't really need six channels for this truck yet, but if we put lights or, or a winch on it, that would definitely come in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and just install this really quickly with the adhesive tape. So with the receiver in, I'm going to put in the servo next. Here's my servo. That's going to go up front. But before we do that, I just want to point out that in the screws, that are included in the electronics bag. There is one screw that looks a lot like some of the other ones that we've used already, but you'll see it has a little bit of blue Loctite on it. This screw is designated for the servo horn, uh, which is going to be screwing metal into metal, so that's why you have Loctite on it. So just make sure that you don't use this screw for anything else, uh, because it is supposed to go to the servo horn. I always recommend that before you install the servo horn, you turn the servo on so that way it centers itself, and then you put the servo horn on after it's centered. But right now I'm going to bring in the Hobbywing 1080. Now this product is entirely new to me. I've never actually used a 1080. I've used the 60 amp version uh, on several projects actually. I think I have a total of three of them uh, in the shop right now. but. I've never used the 80 amp version, and this one's supposed to be very programmable, so I'm excited to see uh, what it's going to do for me. It already looks awesome. Uh, the red and the uh, logo there looks really cool. We've got a program box that's included. You can see here that it doesn't have a uh, Traxxas connector and it doesn't have bullet connectors uh, for the motor, but that's not an issue because I do have bullet connectors uh, in the shop, and I'll show you guys that later on. This is the program card that's included. Pretty cool. I assume that there are instructions. Oh wow, look at that actually. We've got a whole list here of what all of the different modes do. That's very nice. I like that. Uh, we've got our adhesive tape. Uh, this is going to be the plug so we can connect the ESC itself to the, bind, uh, to the uh, program card. And then we've got instructions and some stickers in the bottom. So very cool. Uh, let's start by putting the adhesive on the ESC so that way we can actually mount it up to the truck. Another cool thing that this ESC does have is it's also got a uh, external switch that is attached to a lead so it's actually separate from the ESC itself. I actually like this because sometimes uh, I've had issues kind of having to dig under the body to actually reach the button on the Traxxas ESC. But with this, we can place it pretty much wherever it will reach with the wires that are on it. So let's go ahead and put this right there. The first thing I'm noticing is that the receiver wire is not long enough to reach across 
the chassis and then go into the receiver box. So I'm gonna have to put a wire extension on it. You might've caught a glimpse of this in the uh, fire truck build project, but I've got this big box that's just full of just about any kind of wire connector, uh, any kind of adapter. We've got JST plugs, we've got Futaba plugs, uh, male, female, Y splitters. This is a bunch of connectors right here. We've got a ton of different connectors uh, and different wires, just about any kind of adapter you could think of, some old electronics that I take connectors off of, stuff like that. So I've got plenty of those that uh, we can work with, starting with the bullet connectors. We're gonna need to put some of these on our ESC. Okay, so apologies for moving ahead off camera. I just really needed to focus on using this new ESC. I went through the instructions. They are very good. Everything explained to me how it needed to go. Uh, basically what we've got here is a signal wire that is connected to the program card. And as you can see, the program card is on right now. Um, this is basically how you're gonna program the ESC to do what you want it to do. I've got it plugged into my battery right now and then the ESC is powering the program card. Nothing is plugged into the receiver right now, okay? Uh, so this is item number two and this is value number two. Item and value are two different things. The item is going to be what kind of function you're gonna be operating on and then the value is basically the subcategory within the item uh, that is going to give you the different options for that different item. So for example, this item number two is what kind of battery the ESC is going to take. Uh, the second value is nickel metal hydride, which is what we've got right here. If I were to change the value to one, that would be for a LiPo. I don't want LiPo, so I change it to that and we're all good. So originally stock out of the box, the ESC does not come with the brake activated. It's uh, immediate forward and reverse. What I did was I went through and I changed that because I wanna have the brake at least until I get a better understanding of how the truck feels with this ESC. Uh, the other settings with drag brake and, and whatnot, uh, they have drag brake, initial start force, freewheeling, all sorts of, of other cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna need to do that once the truck is built and once I'm driving it and I can feel the difference. I can't really do that right now without any axles attached. But uh, I've, got the e uh, I've got the radio on I'm in model two, which means that this is completely different than my uh, fire truck that I built with this radio. And now I'm going to turn on the ESC. We hear the beeps. And now we've got throttle. Now it sounds like there's instant brake. So that might need to be adjusted later on. Our servo. I don't know if you can hear it, but our servo is running. So that's great, everything is working. I'm gonna clean up these wires. I'm gonna add an extension to this ESC. I'm going to add the connectors to the uh, motor side of the ESC, and we're gonna get this thing wrapped up. So it's been about half an hour or so since I talked to you last in the last clip that you just saw. Um, what I've done is I have put bullet connectors onto the ESC wires. So the motor's all hooked up now, everything is great. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and tuck in all of these wires into the receiver box, put the gasket around, and then close it up. I've got the wire cover portion of the receiver box on. Make sure that you add some silicone grease that's included with the kit. So that way you protect from water getting inside the box. It does tell you in the instructions where to apply it and when to apply it. Um, so make sure that you do that. I've only got a couple of wires coming out of here, so really not a whole lot. Uh, it's gonna be really easy to just tuck these in and put the cover on. But with more wires, with more channels and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna make sure that the receiver box closes very nice and tight so that way no water gets in because your receiver is really the most exposed electronic on the truck uh, without the box. The receiver is all closed up. Everything went together as it should. The last thing we gotta do is put together the battery tray. This should be pretty easy and that's gonna wrap it up.
Okay, so the battery tray is now in. I'm gonna flip the truck upside down. And since the steering servo is centered from when I uh, turned the truck on a little while ago, I am now going to install the servo horn. Servo horn needs to be facing directly outwards, uh, straight in front of the truck, just like that. And then we're going to put our little screw with the Loctite right through to the servo. And boom, that's it. And there we go. So there it is, the full complete chassis. Now the next part is going to be doing the suspension and the driveline. We're going to fit all of that into the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Maybe you learned something new with this Hobbywing 1080. Uh, in case you're not aware, I am putting the links to all of the parts that I'm using for this build in the description. Be sure to check them out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.